Hello, and welcome to another session of Do Life, and I have with me Pastor Edward Kirkpatrick of our Born and Life International Church in Greensboro. I mean, I've had these sessions with him so many times, and I love every minute of it because we talk about relevant issues, matters that are close to your heart, and what everybody wants to know. So welcome, Pastor Kirkpatrick, affectionately called Pastor K. Yes. So let's just go at it. Well, it's an honor to be here, uh, His Majesty. Thank you again for allowing me the opportunity to share on this Do Life platform. You know, each week that we have the opportunity to talk, uh, so many subject matters are coming up. So many different things are happening in life. But one of the things that we want to address today is um, how do people become what it is that they believe? You know, the Bible says in, in John chapter 1, verse 12, that as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. So we do know that even as Christians, becoming who God originally called us to be is a process. We don't get there overnight. But so many people are frustrated because when they look at their present condition versus their preferred future, they say, how am I going to become what it is that I know God has called me to be? So let's talk a little bit today about process and help people not to be frustrated with the process of becoming who it is that they believe God has called them to be. So can you talk a little bit about process? Mm -hmm. That's a very practical question. But I would like to begin with the word begin or start. Everything in life has a starting point. You don't become without starting. Mm. You start from zero or one before you get to 99 or 100. And you may declare it's a process. You cannot become overnight yes. unless it's miracle. And the one who can do things of such is God. Because a miracle is God who performs the act that beats human understanding. But if you are going to grow in life, the word growth means conception, birth, before growth. So when you are a believer and you are born afresh into the family of the Lord or God, you grow. We grow daily in grace. We grow in knowledge. We even grow in experience. And our faith just gets deepened. So no one should be frustrated or disappointed. And I know there are many people out there who wish that there is no tomorrow but next week. But it doesn't happen that way. Everything has a starting point. I mean, you don't start from first grade and the next day you are graduating. There's a process. Yes. Time. And also, it takes others to help mold you or prepare you to become all that you ought to be. I mean, when you're a Christian, you don't only experience good things. You experience good things, bad things, and ugly things, or challenging things. Because all of these things are part of the development of your character, strengthening of your faith, and also giving you experience that can help you manage your growth period. Wow, that's powerful. You, you talked about failure mm -hmm. in the process because I think oftentimes people become discouraged um, in this process of becoming uh, when it comes to their own personal weaknesses and failures. So what I'm hearing you say is that failure is a part of the process. Failure is very critical. If you never experience failure, you will never be happy when you succeed. Mm. Because people who have failed, when they succeed, they appreciate the effort. That's good. The great side of failure is that it tells you not to quit mm. until you beat it. And you are not a failure until you stop trying. So in life, I mean, oppositions are necessary because without opposition, you will never be positioned. You need to experience stress so that you can able to say, I've got rest. That's good. It's part of life. Yes. It's part of life. So whoever says, 
failure is bad, doesn't know the good side of failure. Wow. Because failure will give you the opportunity to be resilient, mm -hmm. to be courageous, and also determined. Mm. So in our walk with God, our experience with God, there are many things that will come against us. But it's not meant for you to be broken. That's why the Bible says that our temporal challenges mm -hmm. cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. Our testing and trials will yield greater results. That's good. Therefore, count it all joy when you fall into diverse kinds of temptation. All of these things will reorganize you to know which way to take or which way to go and how to stand firm mm -hmm. in the midst of the storm. That's good. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says, you know, all things work together for the good, Romans 8, 28, for them who love God and who are called according to his purpose, mm -hmm. which indicates to me that when God called us to become what it is that he ordained us to be, he's already um, laid the groundwork, so to speak. In other words, he's gone before us and he's made preparations for us to become what it is that he wants us to be. But in that process of becoming, we experience ups and downs, ins and outs. And I think so many times we can easily become discouraged when we begin to look at the challenges and the opposition that we have to go through in order to arrive at a destination. So in your experience of life, uh, let's talk for a moment about how you've handled setbacks and disappointments because everybody experiences setbacks and disappointments. And I think that if people are not careful they allow those disappointments and those setbacks to stifle them from continuing in the process. So what would you say to people who are right now watching us today that's going through a setback, that's experienced um, heartache, that's discouraged, and they're, they're watching us and they're saying, I hear what you're saying. That's good. But right now, I, I just, you know, I don't feel like going on. I, I feel like that I made too many mistakes, that I've failed too many times, and certainly God can't bless or use me because of the things that I've done. What would you say to that person? If you learn the principle of principles of life, you will discover that setback prepares you to be reset. Mm. Disappointment prepares you to be reappointed. Yes. You know, how I handle things or how I've managed some of the experiences or challenges I've had in life, if there's never been a struggle or pain, there's no way there'll be victory. Mm. No pain, no gain. Yes. Okay. So I also believe that every day that I wake up is a gift from God. And every day that I'm able to say it's time to go to bed, it's time to say thank you, God. I'm grateful for the days I have. I'm grateful for the things I've been through. And I'm most happy for the things that God has used, what I've been through, to develop and prepare me for what I do today or who I am today. Now, I mean, challenges will come. I mean, no child learns how to walk without first learning how to fall. Mm, that's good. Every child that walks learns to fall. But when you fall for the first time, you may cry. Mama will help you to pick you up, or daddy will help you pick you up. Mm -hmm. But after a second, third falling, not all falls will result in crying. <laughs> you understand? Yes, sir. Not all falling will cause you to cry. By this time, you've realized that falling doesn't mean the end of your life. Yes. I'll give you a very important, a special experience. When I had my first daughter, I'll put it this way. When my wife and I had our first daughter... <laughs> Yeah. Yes, right. <laughs> because I contributed in the process. Right, right. I'm the seed carrier, Carry. and she's a seed protector. Yes. I mean, she incubated a seed. Okay, but I'll tell you, my wife left home once. Her mother was visiting with us, and she was leaving the next day, I believe, and they were going out shopping, and she asked me to take care of my little baby, which is our little baby, which is our first daughter. Yes. And you know, she was gone, and I expected her to be back within an hour. The moment she left the house, less than 10 minutes, the baby who was supposed to be sleeping and me told that she would be up almost an hour's time 
woke up with tears instead of crying. Mm. I didn't know what to do. That's my first baby. Yes, sir. And I went and I saw the baby cry so hard, and I picked her up. She couldn't stop crying. I mean, whatever I did, the baby cried. And I stood there. I didn't know what to do, and I started crying with the baby. <laughs> <laughs> I cried so hard with the baby. Yeah. And when he said, nah, I also say, hey. <laughs> Going back and forth. I mean, I didn't know what to do. And yeah. you know what? It looked like eternity. <laughs> she was just gone for an hour and a half. Yes, sir. But it looked like eternity. I'm telling you, and all kinds of thoughts was going through my mind. The moment she opened the door, I rushed with the baby, and I said to her, with tears in my eyes, in front of her mother. The mother has never seen me in tears before. Yes. But that day, I'd care less who <laughs> saw no tears. I was so incensed, and I said to her, you promised me you would never leave this baby again with me. Yes. And she st broke down, started laughing. She laughed so hard. And the mother asked in Spanish, what's wrong? And she told the mother, and she's just joined in, and they were laughing at me. And you know, I stood there, and I, I looked stupid. She took her baby, and right after she took the baby, she got quiet yes, for a minute. Sir. Yes, sir. Now, I learned a lesson from that. Today, that little girl is now a, a woman, yes, mature sir. woman. And I look back, and many times, these thoughts will run through my head. And I said, you know... It's amazing when you've never handled experience like this or a situation like this, mm. you think that's the end of the world. But you learned later on that it's part of the process. As she was growing up, I wasn't scared again when she cried. And it's part of the process. Yes. The more they cry, the more they develop lungs. Mm. Some of the cries that we cry in life, it's helping us to develop lungs. Wow. So we can breathe better. That's good. So not every challenge that we go through is meant to break us. God will use the same temptation or the same challenges that we go through to create an escape for us yes. or to make us stronger and better. Mm. I have handled challenges, and I don't believe it's over. I mean, you don't get over. You get over when you quit breathing. Yes. But these things are there. These things will come. And don't expect to be at the top of life without going through or hitting the bottom of life. Mm. It's a process. Yes, sir. It's a process. I mean, you have to go through some things to be able to believe that what you gain, you earn it. That's good. So we, we learn from failure. You know, we'll you learn from failure. We learn from failure. Everybody have to learn from failure. I always say again, you are not a failure until you stop trying. Until you stop trying. Don't quit. Failures don't quit. And those who quit, give themselves, those who quit, give themselves the license of failure. Mm. But those who fight to survive are the ones that failure fears. Mm. Failure can fear you when you don't give it an audience. Yes. But failure will embrace you and give you a license if you choose to submit to it. That's good. Don't quit. Don't quit. You are not a failure. Wow. You have to go through. And God says that when you go through, I'll be with you. Mm -hmm. It is I'll leave you. Yes, sir. I'll be with you. So you have to go through some things and give God opportunity to pass through these things with you mm -hmm. because you will never walk alone. So all that you go through, God is in the midst of it. Yes. I'll give you an example. The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, what happened? When they were in the furnace of fire, God was with them. Yes. Daniel, when he was in the lion's den, guess what? God was with him. The people of Israel, when they were crossing the Red Sea, God was with them. Yes. God is always with you. Mm -hmm. God will never leave you, nor forsake you. So when you are going through things, you have to remember that someone greater than you is in the midst with you. That's good. And they will see you through. Yes, sir. So when we talk about process, and that was great, I, I really uh, enjoyed the uh, example you gave with, with your faith, your firstborn, um, and, and the process that you had to go through. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that in that time, you had to learn patience. I mean, as a, even as parents, you know, and, and the things that we go through, 
process is not just for spiritual purposes, but process is also for natural purposes as well. I mean, to become a parent, uh, to become a good father or a good mother, you know, there's a process. We don't just become great. And I think sometimes people look at great people and they think they got there overnight. And that is wrong. And that's the wrong thing. I always say that don't always learn from people's success stories. Learn from the experiences. Mm. Because if you can learn from people's experience, you have courage to stand the test of time. Yes. People will tell you, you know what? I mean, I started a business, and within three years, I made uh, uh, 500,000 or a million. Mm. They didn't tell you what they went through. Wow. Some will not tell you the rejections, mm. the sleepless nights. Mm. Some will not even tell you that they lost their families, mm -hmm. lost their marriages, mm -hmm. lost friends. Enough, it doesn't happen overnight. And we should quit trying to get to the top, taking shortcuts. Wow. Because shortcuts is always the longest way back. Because if you take a shortcut and you get lost, just like buying a cheap thing, anything you buy cheap, often you don't take receipt. So when it breaks down, you can't return them. That's good. But when you pay a price. Anything that you pay, which is pricey, you get receipt. Mm -hmm. Because why should I get or pay for, I mean, why should I get an uh, uh, extended warranty on something that is a dollar? But if I have to spend, some, uh, if I have to spend uh, uh, good money, I get, uh, uh, what, extended warranty. Yes. Because if anything goes bad, the warranty will cover it. Yeah. Many people want to buy cheap things or want to live cheap lives and expect warranty on their lives. Mm. It doesn't work that way. Mm. That's good. Whatever you put in is what you get back. If you don't put in some hard work and experience some uh, disappointments and failures, you will not enjoy success. That's good. Process. And let's talk a little bit about price. The price. Because you, you just alluded to price, talking about there's a price to success. People who are successful pay a price. You talked about some may lose their families, their marriages. You know, there's great sacrifice involved. I want to talk about the process that, the price rather, that one has to pay for becoming a powerful man or woman of God. What are some of the things? You've traveled the world. You've preached to thousands of people. You have saw amazing miracles, signs and wonders. The Lord has used you to speak accurate prophetic words of wisdom and knowledge in people's lives. And people may look at you from a distance and say, wow, he's anointed. He's powerful. But talk a little bit about the price. <clears throat> I'll start with God. God's greatest dream was to create a family that would be perpetual. He started a process. The all-knowing God and how the process interrupted. What interrupted his process was part of what he created. That is Lucifer. Wow. Lucifer interrupted God's plan. He put God to work. God had to come up with alternative plan to redeem his original plan. So for God, whose vision was still intact, that he would get him a family, didn't stop at interruption. He continued. Yes. That's perseverance. You have to persevere. Your perseverance will yield great results. Now, God went further to the point where he made sure that Lucifer was removed out of his presence. But that did not end. Now, he has to contend with what Lucifer was doing here on earth by convincing Eve and Eve convincing Adam to actually miss out on God's basic instruction wow. and add to it. Mm -hmm. God have to actually, again, persevere because of one plan. It got to a point that in God's process, birth or men who were brought into this world, sons of men, became evil in their thinking, that they went against God. To the point again when God says, it grieved me that I've created man. I'll destroy man from the face of the earth. 
still determined to have a family. He changed his mind ultimately when he found Noah. God was still determined to this very day. But before he got to this point, God was determined to work out the process. So he paid a price. Mm. And he sent Jesus Christ, yes. his only begotten son, his only begotten son, to come and pour or share the blood of God. Because Jesus was not conceived by man. So the blood that he came with is pure blood. That's why the blood has power to do anything. Yes. So God's blood, that's the price God had to pay. God had to pay a, a price by making sure that his blood was spilled on earth through Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. death on the cross. Glory. He paid a price. Mm -hmm. So when any person gets saved, God begins now to sit and count his blessings by rejoicing through the angels for one sinner that gets saved. Because when you work and you earn a living, you can rejoice because nobody can take it away from you. So nothing should come cheap and nothing should come easy. And anything that is free has something behind it that you don't know because there's nothing free in this world. Even though Jesus, you receive him on the notion that it's free. The moment you accept him, God says that you are purchased with a price and free. So you have to understand that life those who look for free things often don't appreciate or value good results. That's good. So you have to go through. So the things I've experienced, things I've seen in life, I mean, with all of the things to this point that are experiences I've had, and I have to overcome each one of them, tough experiences, difficult experiences. If I tell you some of the experiences, you'll be surprised. I have been shot at three times. Wow. I've been poisoned. Not only shot with gun, when I was six years old, I was shot through my right eye with poisonous dart. I've been poisoned. I have been literally ridiculed. I have even been arrested for preaching the gospel. Wow. It's all part of the process. That's why the Bible says that your present suffering cannot be compared. Yes, sir. You've got to pay a price. That's good. Anyone who doesn't pay a price doesn't know the value of what they have. Mm. Because if you pay for a price and you are selling what you paid for, you can name a price. But if you didn't know the value of it, you can undersell. That's good. That's good. Or oversell. But when you pay a price, you appreciate yes, sir. life. That's so good. You know, I know we only have a few more minutes remaining in this installment of Do Life. And before we close, I would like for you to just pray for that person who is kind of saying, I'm in the midst of a process. I'm, I'm going through this process of becoming who God has called me to be. And uh, they may be experiencing, you know, some discouragement. They may be experiencing the, some weariness. Um, because I think a lot of people right now, you know, are just weary. You know, people are, are tired. We've been dealing with so much in life. And so uh, I want you to just pray for those who are in this process of becoming, and yet they're becoming weary and discouraged and tired. I would like to say to you that <clears throat> you have the luxury to even think you want to quit. But I'm saying truthfully to you, there's something inside you that says quitting is not an option. You cannot quit. You've come too far to quit. You may be discouraged for this moment, but I'm speaking words of comfort to you that if you allow these words to get into your spirit, you will be courageous. You may be afraid because of the uncertainties. But if you allow this message again to get into your spirit, you will have courage and you will banish your fears 
And your spirit will say, I can handle this because I know beyond this present struggle lies a great victory. I pray that the Lord will sustain you and also want to say to you, don't be weary and don't even be discouraged. Continue doing the good that you know because in due season you reap if you faint not. God has not abandoned you. He's only a distance away from you. But you can bridge that gap and let him be closer to you than ever by knowing that he has begun a good work in you and he will finish it. We are surrounded by problems. But in the midst of the problems, we have assurance that we're going to walk past these problems to the better side because greater promises are awaiting us. God will not let you down. So be strong and be of good courage and know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Don't think about failure. Start considering success and start thanking God in advance that victory is coming your way. Be strong and again be of good courage for the Lord is your redeemer and your peace shall increase and your trouble shall soon be a matter of the past. I bless you and ask God's grace upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been churchy too long and so religious. And there are subject matters that ought to be dealt with. But often we leave it alone because we don't know how to manage it. Listen, let's talk real. Let's be practical. And let's put religious stuff to the background. We can use scripture as backup. But let's make sure that we deal with real issues that people are facing on a daily basis. Because here on Do Life TV, we're dealing with real people with real problems. And we're bringing real answers. So be sure, go to the link below and share with us your questions and subject matters that you would love for us to address. We look forward to doing life with you together.